Hello and welcome back to the Fruit of Grisaya. Last time, Yuji was witness to a rather strange lecture in English taught by Makina to Michiru, without any of them getting seemingly better at English. We, Yuji also decided to spend the day following the schools made around Sachi Kumini Sachi that ended with an obvious but not ex not surprising where Sachi was dead cleaning around in her underwear. However, for once it didn't cause Yuji any major issues. Let's continue. Specifically this. Sachi has suddenly moved from her habitual, habitual seat directly in front of the teacher's podium to the desk immediately next to mine. Not that she's started pressing her blubber against Miyamana style, she's just changed her seat. Not a particularly dramatic event, really. Hey Yuji, I'd like your explanation for this right now, and it better be good. I'd like to hear an explanation myself, honestly, but first of all, can you stop interrogating me as if I'm an, 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 if, as if I'm an unfaithful husband? But this small change seems to have taken everyone around me by surprise, prompting general curiosity. Don't tell me you're blackmailing our innocent Sachi. Did you order her to change seats? Is that it? Oh, an interesting scenario. Where would things go from there? Well, you'd take dirty photos of her and then call her to your room. Hey, how dare you make a girl say stuff like this? I don't remember making you reveal your sick and twisted mind. Hey, Sachin, why'd you move next to Onichan? As Makina plunges into the heart of the matter, the other two Inquisitors catch whoop, their breath in anticipation. There's no particular reason, it's just... It's just... I think I slightly prefer it this way. Hmm. And why exactly would she suddenly prefer this seat? Was nearly walking into a girl's bathroom together that much of a bonding experience? Hey, Sachi, is that, um, would that mean a certain somebody, uh, likes Yuji? I'm sorry, who exactly? You, Michiro-sama? Well, well, we're not talking about me, obviously! I'm asking you if, if you move because you like Yuji, Sachi! Having grasped the nature of the question, Sachi closes her eyes in thought. I don't think that's it, no. Huh? Really? Yes, I'm quite convinced Kasami-san isn't a bad person, but I don't have any romantic feelings toward him at the moment. That's so. It is indeed. Sachi simply answers the question put to her in a steady, bland tone of voice. This hasn't changed at all from the day I met her. Tee hee hee, you got shut down pretty quick, Yuji! Yeah, before I even made my move. That's a new record. So, you basically just felt like it? Yes, I basically just felt like it. There's a slight smile on Sachi's face as she speaks. That face is adorable. I'm pretty confident she's speaking with complete honesty. Still, at the moment would seem to suggest the possibility of further developments. Hmm. Well, never say never, Yumiko. I spent an entire day with her yesterday, but Sachi's thoughts are still beyond my understanding. But it seems clear that her opinion of me have undergone a subtle change of some sort. Ah, Kumini-san, do you have a moment? Certainly. If you don't mind, I have a little favor too. Please come back after you fix that habit of baby talking to your pits. Ah? Huh? Why would Kumini-san say something like that? Did I do something to her? Oh, Yuji. It's pretty well known that rabbits can die if they get lonely enough. You might assume that means you should be petting your bunnies all at all times, but in fact excessive contact can stress their nerves badly enough to inspire escape attempts. Moderation is the rule in our interactions with other creatures. But human beings have a hard time finding that balance even when we try. All too often we clumsily misjudge the appropriate distance or stumble in our attempts to maintain it. Hold on, Unichan! It's a crisis, you know! Seriously! Hey! Yep, sounds bad. A crisis to be true. 
A recess period, Magna pops up noisily before my eyes and proceeds to grab at my clothes and may shake me back and forth. I ward her off with one hand, paying little attention to the specific content of her squawking. Hey, Onichan, what's with the brush off? Well, I assume you're just babbling. Can't say I'm sensing a whole lot of danger right now. But it's true! Don't give me that unruff and cool guy face right now! Earth in danger, you know? I can't do anything about my face. Leaving that aside, I suppose it wouldn't do to ignore a global crisis. Oh, Earth was a bit of an exaggeration. Sorry about that. It's a little more localized, specifically limited to our class. That's a pretty dramatic sc dropping scale, you little punk. But in many symbi symbolic and philosophical and anime, the events in such microscopic microscopic communities are directly connected to the fate of the world, so I'm not really that far off. What the hell are you even talking about? Well, leaving aside symbolism and the fate of the Earth or whatever, I think it's fair to say it's a fairly serious matter on the scale of, let's see, a kilometer radius or so. Oh. Machina is one thing, but if Aman is backing her up, I guess this does warrant my attention. What's this? Something up? Oh, why are the group meeting all of a sudden? I have a feeling this is going to get out of hand if everyone jumps into the conversation. But just as I'm about to shoo away the two late arrivals... That's it! For some reason, Amanda jabs out her finger in my direction and powerfully declares something or other. I'd appreciate it if you could explain what it is a little more comprehensibly than that. That word everyone you just used, that's the problem here. Think about it, Yuji. I have no idea what this woman is talking about. Does leading a, leading a normal student life require the ability to find Germany in this sort of vague, meaningless riddle? In that case, I've still got a ways to go. Come on, you say everyone, but aren't we missing a certain someone? Oh, so we're talking about Sakaki. We're finally on the same page. I use the word everyone when only five of us are here. Aman is suggesting my unconscious exclusion of Sakaki Yumiko from the group suggests a problem in our social dynamic. Right, we get to a recess period and half the time she just vanishes. The rest of the time she's hiding behind a book shutting everybody out. Is that really what Sakaki-san wants? You have to wonder sometimes. She's keeping her distance out of her own free will, so presumably this is how she wants it to be. I don't think it's necessarily something we need to worry about. It's been that way up until now, but that might just be a vicious cycle circle she can't break out of, you know? If we approach her a little more proactively, there's a possibility things might change. Hmm. I hadn't thought of it that way, but she might be onto something. Sakaki is a human being after all. Much as a box cut of brandishing mischief may stand out, letting those moments of hostility prejudice all of our interactions with her means giving up on all hope of mutual understanding. That girl's gonna give in once we push her a bit. She's just dying for us to shove her into the group so she can play the reluctant, long-suffering voice of reason. Probably. Oh, Makina. How did you reach that conclusion? Do you have any evidence whatsoever? None! Just going off the template. Okay, you stop talking now. Hmm, I guess you guys might be right, but honestly I'm a bit too scared to try. Make one move and she'll flash that icy smirk at you. It's bad for the heart. Yes, that's true. Michiru Sama in particular seems to receive that murderous smile quite frequently. Even as a bystander, maintaining my calm proves to be a challenge. Ah, uh, so it's not my imagination after all. She's really gunning for me. Anyway, let's try to forget our personal traumas for the moment. I had a pre pretty good idea just now. How does a little contest to see who can get the friendliest with Sakaki sound? Oh boy. That is bound to go wrong, isn't it? <laughs> <clears throat> a contest? How would that work? Let's see, we'd give out punch. Like, touching your hand would be one point, tug on his sleeve you'd get three points. Is it my imagination or is this sounding increasingly fishy, also potentially dangerous? Human has got that long pretty hair too, you know. Okay, so touch your hair on its one point, pull on it for three and five for yanking a hair out. Sound good? How many points for cutting some off? Oh, you're an aggressive one. Alright, how about ten per centimeter you cut off? That's a pretty potent multiplier. 
Oh, you sound like a challenge. Human chance head might end up a plastic wasteland before I'm through. Okay, I'm starting to get slightly concerned. Can we slow down for a second here? Are you all seriously going to do this? My voice of restraint falls on deaf ears. The rest of the group is getting more fired up by the second. What about snatching away a book the Sakakistan is reading? Alright, that's 100 points, but get this, if you manage to get the book on top of Sakaki's head, it's 10,000 points. 50,000 for the ultimate reversal of fortune. Make the book read her. Amazing. The tantalizing possibility of an instant come from behind victory adds a whole new level of excitement. A book reading Sakaki? What does that even mean? Please explain in detail. Was this a surreal gag? Did Amana trip over her tongue in increasingly frantic excitement? At this rate, I'll likely never know the truth. The bizarre conversation rolls forward, momentum building by the second. You'd think everyone involved in was hitting the peak of chemical-induced high. It might just be my imagination, but sometimes I think I may have found my way into a fairly deranged excuse for a learning environment. Okay, then, the match will be held during the next recess period. The person who gets friendliest with Sakagi is the champion. Alright! A worthwhile challenge indeed. I'll show you what I can do. Do you people actually hate Sakaki or what? The enthusiastic group of conspirators doesn't dignify my perfectly reasonable question will response. Oh, poor Sakaki. Tragically for Sakaki, the next recess period arrives all too quickly. Okay, Yuji, don't go tattling into Sakaki's hand, got it? Fine. You're the official scorer, Oni-chan. You gotta stay impartial too. Don't start rooting for anybody, okay? Fine, fine. Let's get this over with. To be honest, I seriously doubt this is going to get us any closer with Sakaki, but giving the game away would probably make things just as awkward in its own way. And so I have adopted the typically, typically Japanese policy of watching passively over the situation from a safe distance. Sakaki Yumiko, the unexplored territory, the final frontier. Seated at her desk, face buried in a thick book, her body language projects a desire to be left alone. Um, Sakaki-san, do you have a second? Yes. The Su Amane expedition takes first daring step into the wilderness. Her approach appears impressively natural. The woman's something of a skilled actress, apparently. Of course, she should probably be putting that talent to better use than this, but... What is it? Well, you see, we had a little chat while you weren't around. Some variety of malicious gossip, was it? No, 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 not at all. Sakaki coolly throws out a perceptive question without bothering to look up from her book, prompting a flustered denial from Amane. We were reflecting on our past behavior towards you, Sakaki, and we felt we might have been interacting with you without adequate consideration for your feelings. Yeah, right, what she said. What do you mean? Well, it feels like we tend to meddle a little too much and end up bothering you some time. If you'd like, we can try to be a little more restrained, maybe? I see. Could you be more specific? Hey, oh, Yumi-chan, what you reading? Makina tries to snatch away the book with a surprise attack, but it's forcefully rebuffed by Sakaki, who is clearly in a state of heightened awareness. Tch. Makina clicks her tongue in irrepressible frustration. She'd been gambling on taking big points with that opportunity, but sadly her moments have passed with nothing more than a one-point hand touch. It would seem a certain someone isn't quite on board with your proposal. Jeez, Makina, what the heck are you thinking? I'm sorry for Makita's behavior, Sakaki-san. Did she twist your hand? Let's suppose she did. Is there some reason why you need to start touching it as well? Yes, it's better to be safe than sorry. Please let me take a careful look. The palm of your hand and fingers don't seem to be injured. Let's see about the wrist. Sachin's really something. She converted someone else's failure into an immediate profit. I gotta keep my eye on that one. Amada and Makina quietly mutter to each other, careful to keep out of Sakaki's earshot. The palm of Sakaki's hand and her fingers are pretty much a package deal, so I'll award one point for the pair. With the addition of the wrist, Sachi jumped into an early lead with two points. Jeez, Sachi, and we're not just talking about this. Well, we're not just talking about this. You gotta give Sakaki some her space, or you, she's gonna start thinking you're a weirdo, you know? 
Can I ask why you feel the need to pound on my back as you speak? Oopsie, I'm sorry. Your big sis didn't mean nothing by it. You know, out in country and all, all ladies go around thumping people like this in the drop of a hat. That's fascinating, but I'd really appreciate it if you stopped hitting me at some point. Thumping equals 5 points, and she just ex executed a 5 hit combo. Making excellent excuse of her foxy cancer act, girl act, Amanda seizes 25 points in the blink of an eye. The old lady reference also seems like a clever play taking advantage of the difference in their ages, but expressing my admiration on this one would likely lead to a new conflict. I exercise discretion and keep my trap shut. Amane, it's really rude to just start hitting yumi Ten out of nowhere like that. Here, let me demonstrate. Like this. Very rude, am I right, yumi Ten? You're being about ten times ruder at the moment. Just when I thought the balance of power had shifted to Amane, Makina used her established thoughtlessness to, as a cover to launch a new series of attack, quickly acquiring 40 points. Keeping up with the scoring is beginning to prove challenging in its own right. Yeah, Yumiko, do you have a loose button on your uniform there? Ah, uh, no, it's nothing. My mistake, Sakaki-chan. Sakaki anticipates Michiro's approach and brings it to a premature halt with a powerful glare. The pseudo-sunderer wilts like a potted plant under the desert sun. Ah, there certainly was a loose button. Here you are. Huh? Seizing the moment once again, Sachi deftly plucks a button from Sakagi's uniform, then holds it out for the inspection in the palm of her hand. Oh, thank you. Not at all, it's only natural. Sakagi is clearly dubious. In comparison, Sachi is beaming from ear to ear. She's got guts to launch a bold attack like that under, risky, under such risky circumstances. In deference to a dauntless soul of a maid, I mentally award 50 points, bringing Sachi's total to 52. She has regained the lead in a flash. If you'd like, I can sew a button on back immediately. Fine, do as you like. Certainly, please leave it to me. Hey, don't yank on my clothes like that. I'm very sorry, but I need you a little closer to get the correct angle for my needle, if you don't mind. Sachi launches a follow-up follow -up attack, pulling on Sakaki's school uniform down to 3 points, bringing her to a total of 55. Uh, uh, and why exactly are you pulling me in the opposite direction? Well, you got stretched out in that direction, so I thought I'd restore the balance. Hope I didn't bother you or anything. Quite honestly, you did. Alrighty then, I'll put you back as where you were. Pulling me a third time isn't going to accomplish anything. Magna adds two talks for a total of addiction, addition of 6 points, with a score of 46, she's hot on such a heel. Look, what exactly are you people playing at here? Sakaki is not completely obvious, oblivious, but at this point she's clearly realized that she's become the group plaything. Her voice has, has a dangerous edge to it. Come on, don't say that. If you're grumpy all the time, this beautiful hair of yours will start going white. Of course it won't. Don't attempt to distract me, and will you please stop touching me? But you had a split end, see? Spare me the nonsense. No, it's true. Take a look. Amanda seems to have discovered a genuine split end. Takagi falters for a moment, obviously, obvi obviously thrown off her balance. Devious as Amanda may be at times, I don't think this was planned out beforehand. I don't particularly care. It's hardly important. That's no good. You gotta pay a little attention to your grooming, or you end up becoming an unrepresentable mess of a woman. Come on now. Sakagi attempted to bury the split end in her thick hair, but Amana smoothly intercedes and take up position behind her. Compared to the clearly unnatural interactions earlier, this is a convincingly natural development. From a neutral perspective, it would appear an action of pure goodwill and a friendliness on, um, on Amana's part. Accordingly, Sakagi proves unable to offer any firm resistance. One, two, three touches of the hair. Of course, unbeknownst to her, Amana's ragging up points by the second. Impressive. Damn, Amanda sends Tease to sell one a hell of a couchy position. Having won Sakagi's trust for the moment, Amanda no longer has any need to deploy risky aggressive tactics. As she slowly and steadily racks up points, Magna and Sachi's faces grow increasingly up. Grow increasingly tense with desperation. Mm-hmm. What are you so pleased about? Ah, it, it's nothing. 
Just thinking, your hair is really pretty. Uh, what about that split end? Mind if I pull it out? I just happen to have a pair of shears for split ends. Allow me! Ugh, I got it. Here, I'll let the manager do it. So please don't clarify me like that. Thanks, Michiru. Why am I the only one to suffer? Michiru, it's painful just to watch you. The girl's thoughts are written too plainly on her face, especially when she's up to no good. Takagi is going to shoot her down every time. Perhaps this will inspire her to take a good long look at herself. Mm. On the other extreme, Amane is already coasting into a leisurely victory lap. Combing through Sakaki's long hair, she steps out split ends with the scissors she borrowed from, Maki, from Michiru. As she's racking up another 10 points with every centimeter she harvests, she's already well into the triple digits. <clears throat> Although Sakaki is keeping her expression blank, her reaction to Amana's fiddling with her hair appears to be something like a relaxed boredom. Putting aside the points and this silly content, it seems like they really might be getting friendlier. Yumi-chan, I challenge you to a duel! A duel, you hear? Let's go punch the crap out of each other until a beautiful friendship blooms! No, thank you. Sakaki-san, that's quite an interesting book you've got there. Might I take a look for a moment? No, you've got an evil gleam in your eye. Makina and Sachi try their best to claw back into the fight, but Sakaki's on high alert. Their hands are tied. At this point, it's no exaggeration to say the match is all but decided. Okay, we're all done. Thanks for the scissors, Michiru. Very soon, the chime heralding the end of the recess period will sound. At that moment, this battle will conclude it as well. Sitting comfortably on a commanding lead, Amano refrains from touching Sakagi's hair longer than necessary, bringing the grooming session to a natural end. Ugh. Long since out of the running, Michiru seems destined to end the match with an inept zero points. Ah! As Amane hands over the scissors, they slip through the dejected Michiru's hands and clatter against the floor. As a side note, don't get the idea that Michiru's only can is when depressed. This sort of thing happens all the time. Ah, sorry about that. It's fine, um, uh, there they are. Dropping down under the desk, Michiru crawls forward a bit in the direction of the group. Picking up the scissors, she immediately begins to stand up. Hey, hold on, stop, you're going to... Huh? As Michiru's head launches toward her like the world's clumsiest uppercut, Sakaki instinctively reaches out with her hands to defend herself. Of course, in those hands she's still holding the book she's been protecting all this time. <laughs> oh, I love these these little these little cheapy sessions. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> In the next instant, Sakagi is frozen in pace. Her book, knocked violently out of her hand, now rests on top of her head. Apparently unable to process the situation, Sakagi stands perfectly still. Um... Sakagi's face is blank with dazed confusion. The hardcover of the book lies across the crown of her head like some bizarre helmet. It's a truly surreal moment. I find myself staring blankly, utterly lost for words. Magina has already burst into an explosion of tactic laughter, and Aman is trying and failing to contain her own amusement. Sachi, on the other hand, gazes with some bitterness at this truly astonishing bottom of the ninth. Huh? Hang on. Oh, come back. I think the screen size might be a bit small for this. I'll make it bigger than for the next recording. And in that moment, the bell echoes through the classroom, ending the contest. And now it's time to announce the results! At the next recess period, we gather in the hallway in an attempt to avoid Sakaki's notice. Alright then, who's the winner? Don't keep us in suspense, Yuji! I think you're all aware, well aware already. With a final score of 10,000 points earned by planting Sakaki's book on her to the top of her head, Michiro is our champion. Tough luck, everybody! Blah, this is pretty freaking hard to swallow, you know. I quite agree. What's this I hear? The winning cries of the Alzorans? How very sad, but face the facts, how whatever the means, results are all that count in the end. Luck is a skill in its own right. 
Michiro may have been completely nonplussed by her victory at first, but upon grasping the situation, she instantly puffed herself up like a peacock. I think it's fairly clear the girl has a lot of backed up resentment. Chiro Chiro ate the Chiro Chiro we know and love as she actually wins at something. Yes, this is very out of character, Michiro Sama. Please make sure to lose in a particular horrible way next time in order to restore the proper balance. Is this abuse really necessary? Come on, y'all, settle down now. Amane offers the group vague, soothing words in full Kansai dialect. By the way, Michiro, that was just a coincidence at the end, right? I assume you didn't do it on purpose or anything. Ha! Huh? I mean, no, it was all part of my cunning plan, of course. Michiro's voice ringed with bold confidence. Judging from his stilted phrasing, it most, it's most likely a complete lie, but the words nonetheless sound fairly convincing as they echo hollowly down the hallway. At that moment, everyone else freezes in pure shock. With a quick survey of our surrounding, I soon learn why. I don't miss Amani's, Amani mouthing the word idiot with a slightly smug look on her face either. Her reaction to the defeat is to plot revenge, it would seem. Quite a woman. But anyway, I wonder if this really did get us any little friendly with Yumiko. No, I think not. Sorry. Huh? Why? Well, Michiru, I believe Yuji is referring to the fact that you're about to be destroyed. The heck is that supposed to mean? Hmm, so that was intentional, was it? With a familiar, ominous sound, the shadowy figure that snuck up behind Michiro mutters a few ice-cold words. The smile on Michiro's face instantly hardens into a rigid grimace. Cup copious sta streams of sweat begin to run down her forehead along her cheeks. Why didn't you say something? At last aware of her plight, Michiro squeezes out a few whimpering words of reproach. I'm ashamed to admit it, but I just noticed a moment myself. I might have given them a little bit of a threatening glare so they'd keep their mouths shut. Sorry. Cut the baby talk, Amani. You asked that question knowing full well she was there. Teehee. Take your teehee and shove it. But this is quite a load off my mind. In the end, Michiru Samara has regained her rightful place in order of things. What a relief, don't you agree? I disagree! Stop being relieved! Case closed, you know. Right, that's that. Yumi-chan! I assume this would be obvious, but allow me to make myself clear. I have absolutely no intention of letting the rest of you any off any easier than her. Come on now, don't you feel like we got a little closer in a sense? You're such an optimist, Amanu. Um, what should I do here? Well, probably the same thing as the rest of us. Retreat. Double time. Ah, hey, wait! That's my line! This day would go down as the first time in Academy's history that all of its students were simultaneously absent from a class. But it's said that no one involved dare speak of the reason why. And that's where we'll end this episode as we are close to half an hour. So. In the next episode, we shall see what comes of this. Hopefully no one gets hurt too badly. Well, until then, take care.